A okay, so so this is the Horrible Influence podcast, and today's a little different because Mr. Brad Myrick has made a terrible decision in his career and spends too much fucking time on the road. So our good friend Mr. Michael was able to join us. So Mike, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hell yeah. Uh well, I say well like I have a fucking plan in front of me. <laughs> you have what ideas. You been up to, man? <laughs> we haven't we haven't talked too much lately. What have you been up to? I saw on Facebook you went to Moab. Yeah, I went to Moab, saw my brother, uh me and my wife went out there and jeeping. So we took the Cherokee off. Um matter of fact we were on a trail and uh <laughs> one of the tour guides came out and kinda ripped me a new one because he was tired of seeing street vehicles um on the trails that weren't really capable for it. But uh, I'm pretty sure my Jeep was capable for it. Uh, but we turned back anyways because I was a little frustrated and irritated. So I couldn't finish the trail, so I'm really kind of bummed out about it. Because that means it's an unfinished trail. Like, I don't have that badge anymore of, like, for completing that trail. Like, it's... I mean, I did most of it, like 90% of it. It was just the final obstacle. This guy was on a lifted uh, uh, Toyota 4 Runner, and he had, like, four people in it. It's, like, you know, with, like, 34-inch tires. And he was, like, bragging about how his, his truck can barely make that obstacle and i redid the books and looked at the trail and i'm like the trail was not difficult so i, I it's and then uh we did fins and things which is a pretty cool trail and then we did that at night almost died but the coolest part is that we stopped on top of the fins so with fins and things is basically big giant hill obstacles and okay we went on top of the one of them and there was two jeeps so we all got out turned all the cars off and we chilled there for like 15 minutes and just like enjoyed silence and darkness and stars and so this so was really cool and nice. we made it back yeah hell yeah so i mean we have a couple friends that do the f- we have we have we have a number of friends who talk about being interested in going four-wheeling and we have very few friends that actually go four-wheeling and it seems like even in the group that just fucking talks non-stop about four-wheeling no names mentioned. It, it's just this level of elitism that is kind of... Really? You had to bring up elitism? <laughs> well, I mean, it's like... It's... So, it, it, I... Fuck yeah. Because I, I, I that just... guy should have just shut his mouth and mind his own fucking business. That dude was... was his little pee-pee was about to be in a vice because his super cool truck that he spent a fuck ton of money on can't make it past an obstacle, but what what if yours did? I'm pretty sure it could have. Um, but I, I think I have a new respect, and because my brother, he just got a used Jeep. He got like a 99 Wrangler. Uh, he has like a four, three inch lift, three and a half inch lift with 33s. Everything else is stock. And he did those trails, and so he's probably spent maybe like 11,000, maybe 10,000. Not really, because he just, you know, at least, or you just buy the car. So up front, he may have spent a couple grand with the tires mm-hmm. and the lift. And he did this cool thing. And I was like, oh, wait, it's really that cheap? Like, I had it in my head that you have to have, like, at least for Moab, that you had to have, like, this, you know, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 rig with, you know, all the bells and whistles to survive in Moab. And no, you don't. You just take it easy. And you can't do some of the crazy crap. But, I mean, it was so – that's what kind of, like, okay. So I have a new respect for it. At the same time, I have a new respect for my car's ability. I have this awesome video of putting up on two wheels. And still able to progress through it, like how the car is designed. <laughs> and so, and that's the way I approached that obstacle. My brother couldn't even do it if he didn't do it right because he doesn't have lockers. And so his tires would end up oh, spinning. Okay. But because my car cheats and has technology on its side, it was able to overcome it. So it was really cool. Um, but like, so now I'm like, I'm, that's all I've been doing at work is working and doing research. And yeah, so we'll see. I got to do it at least by next season is the goal so by i think uh uh i think march of next year is the first goal of being out there and i think we're going to make two or three trips out there because we go and oh, st- cool so these places uh we still have rv parks and mm-hmm. they have <laughs> they have these cabins air quotes and they're sheds okay but they're really cool it was like they're small little POS sheds with a with a like a twelve inch TV and like a microwave and old fridge. But I'm like, that's perfect. So, it was awesome. 
two beds. Matthew had a bunk bed in his, so we gave him so much crap for it. It was awesome. It was awesome. So that was that weekend. Man, camping, Mike roughing it, Woo! sleeping in cabins. Yeah, with you know beds and <laughs> yeah, and television, an AC and unit, a heater if we wanted it. I mean, How it was did pretty you rough. Do it? it had a padlock <laughs> on it, so you know it, it was it was real secure. Definitely. Keep, keeps honest people honest, I think, is the shitty saying that doesn't make any fucking sense. Uh, so what have you been up to? So, uh, we... Not a lot. Um, last, this couple days ago, we just got back from a weekend up at a cabin for a birthday party. Um, somebody rented an Airbnb for this big 20-bedroom cabin. Good God. And a bunch of us went up there and partied and had fun, hung out, played card games, board games, all that fun shit. Um, and then the weekend before that, we went up to a different cabin. I don't know. Been a lot of hangout here during the week, and then the weekend we escape. But, uh, yeah, school and haven't had shit time for video games, but trying to keep up on what has become of late. I hear you. I hear you. Well, good for have you. you. Been, have you been able to play anything lately? Uh, right now, I've been playing Stellaris. Uh, sounds sounds boring as fuck. <laughs> sounds like a game you, your brother, and Adam would play. <laughs> Matter of fact, we played it. Uh, me and Adam played it all weekend. Uh, yeah, his buddy Drew was over uh, at his mm-hmm. house. and uh, So from Friday night till, uh, I think, Sunday afternoon, we played it. Um, and basically, it's a 5X game. It's the same makers who made uh, Crusader Kings 2. Um, but it's a space game civilization, um, real t- RTS type of game. It's really in depth. It's really cool. Uh, it's really addicting. Uh, and it's so far like it, they actually knocked it out of the park. I mean, there's no, not really any bugs that we've found as of yet. I mean, it's pretty oh spot on. It's pretty, it's pretty spot on. Right on. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's Crusader Kings 2, but in space. Yes. The, is that right? Well, the, the, yes. But the difference is, is that in Crusader Kings 2, you're playing in the idea of your legacy. So, like, you you may be a king when you start off, and you're planning, like, your offspring, and you're going to marry them off to some person in some other country just so, you know, decades later when you die, your offspring can press claim. And so you're not playing a, your character, if you will. You're playing okay. like your dynasty, your legacy over decades and centuries. And so that's where it gets, and it's, you can play it as slow as like a day at a time. So like each day it lasts for like a second or two, or you can speed it up, and make it go faster. So as you can imagine, the game is very, very slow. Oh, I fucking bet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something about it that's really addicting just because it's, it's, you're, it's very complex. And they put the, the UI in that game is just, shit i mean that's i think that's probably the um major downfall of that game whereas with solaris they did a pretty good job with the ui it's not too busy gives you all the information you need you can drill down into certain things uh so they did a really good job with that game i'm very impressed with it right on how old is that uh i think beginning of this year is when it came out oh okay right on well those early access type stuff and then but when it first came out, like it didn't have all the major components with it, so it was kind of uh, shallow about halfway through the game. And so now it seems like it's pretty, pretty rock solid. Pretty rock lobster. Yeah. Yeah. May of May of this year. Right on. What about you? You got any of the games that you able to get to sometimes? Just Overwatch. Uh, I signed up for. I saw the. I guess was it Ubisoft? I think it's Ubisoft. Yeah, it's Ubisoft. They gave out. Um, they gave out beta keys or alpha keys rather for for honor for they gave beta beta they gave alpha keys to access for honor there we go that was not saying <laughs> four twice in a fucking row and I don't know I saw it announced at E3 and it didn't look interesting to me it looked like it looked like a fucking MOBA but once I actually watched the gameplay of it, it looks like it looks like a fighting game. Like it instead of it 
Yeah, I don't know. It, <sighs> What's that game? It, uh, have you ever played uh, Mountain Blade? Okay, that game fucking sucks. Well, that, that game's terrible. Uh, could be argued, but no. the content <laughs> of that game was that you know you can position your attacks and defend and block using the directional keys, uh, and so that's where that kind of goes. And that's why I'm feeling that is what they're kind of taking notes from. Hopefully, they execute a lot better, and you can actually hit people and not, you know, cheat. I don't know. There's something about Mountain Blade that was complete cheat in a way. This never, never seemed like you were in real control of your hits. But that's why, when I saw that, when I saw the demo, that's what I kind of mind me of. Is like Mountain Blade, but like better. Yeah, yeah. I I could. Yeah, I can dig that. The um, it doesn't look as. It doesn't look as dense as Mountain Blade. Like it doesn't look like near as many people play at a time. Like it looks like three three players is like a max. So it's as you're fighting, like your teammates are getting eliminated or eliminating other eliminating other people. So it could come to the point where it's two v one or even three v one. But the environments were interactable and shit too, and it looked. I don't know, it looks awesome, like, seeing guys, like, capable of kicking each other off of, like, a, a second floor down to the bottom floor and then jumping down and, you know, typical video game shit, stabbing each other with swords or whatever. <laughs> it looked pretty fun, though. No, uh, the, the graphics looks amazing on it. Definitely, uh, yeah. I, I went and finished watching uh, Vikings. So the last couple days, or last couple weeks, I've been just totally just going nuts on series and I, I binge watch Vikings uh, which is really good recommend it I don't know if you've had a chance I've to watch heard it. it's super good I haven't watched it yet though it, it's it's like uh, Game of Thrones light but in different stance um, but it's def- it's definitely a really cool show they did a really good job with it um, and this game kind of makes me want to or with that series makes me want to play this game or vice versa how that works oh okay <laughs> Well, there's Vikings in the game. I mean, it's like... Vikings, yeah. I was going to say that. That's <laughs> Clearly, that's it. it. <laughs> Dude, we started watching Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. Have you seen that? I have not. What is it about? It's on Netflix, and it's about... It's like a, a re rewriting of English history. So, like, magicians are... So it starts out in the beginning with this this one particular dude looking, wondering, going to magician's guilds and wondering why magic isn't cast in England for 300 years. Because magic used to actually be a thing. And these magician groups are just a group of guys that hang out and talk about how cool magic is. But they don't actually cast magic. So this dude finds this Mr. Norell guy, and Mr. Norell is a magician. And then this other dude discovers through a creepy homeless guy that's sleeping in a bush who wakes up. He's like, oh, fucking, you're going to be a magician. And he just points at this guy on the horse. And for whatever reason, for the sake of television, the guy's like, sure, I'll give it a go. So it's about um, that guy who goes under Mr. Norell as an apprentice to learn magic. But... His name's Jonathan Strange, and his approach is much different than Mr. Norell's, where Mr. Norell, like, wants street magic eliminated. And then Jonathan Strange appreciates all types of magic as long as it gets you to the end goal that you want, but Mr. Norell wants... I don't know. It's building up to this pissing match between the two. Like, it starts with them on the same team, and it's gr- they're slowly growing further and further apart. But uh, hmm. yeah, got got real high last night. Watched one of the episodes and had the weirdest fucking dreams of my life. <laughs> uh, have you have you had a chance uh, to? I'm I'm gonna guess to know, but Man in the High Castle. That doesn't sound familiar. So it's an Amazon Prime type series uh, with an alternate universe, but okay, not. So uh, it's World War II era. So this is post World War II. Uh, I think in the 50s, and uh, Nazi Germany dropped the bomb. Okay. On U.S. So not uh, Germany and Japan won, and okay. so 
these are from the perspective of United States Americans whatnot living in a Nazi ran country United States but so mm-hmm. but it's greater Nazi Reich or whatever and then Japan has the west coast and then the basically the Rocky Mountains uh the Rocky Mountain range is pretty much a a a, a free zone or something like that I forgot what the hell they called it but basically that's where like no law is it's their little buffer like a DMZ mm-hmm. if you will uh, oh, okay. And so, but there's these videos that these tapes, is with these newsreels that are being coming or going to uh, like across, and they are showing the alternate universe, like our reality. So, like, they'll see like us bombing Hiroshima or, you know, just totally taking out uh, uh, something else. And so, it's these and people. How are they seeing this? Uh, newsreels. So the rules come in, and they put on a projector, and they see it. Because back in the day, that's how the news was. You'd go to the theater, and you watch a movie, but then they would have a news reel prior to the movie. And so it was playing on the whole idea where the news was on reels. It wasn't like on TV. Okay. And so basically, I think it's – I can't remember if it's the man in the high castle is getting them and sending them out, or it's trying to get to the man in the high castle. So wherever these are coming from, their people are – you know, there's the uh, resistance, and so they're trying to smuggle it from point A to point B. And Nazi Germany, Nazis are, you know, the SS, and they're trying to hunt them down and all this stuff that's going on. And it's a very interesting type of uh, uh, show. But it, it's I enjoyed it. It's only one season right now on uh, Amazon. But So the show is about an alternate line of history where Germany and Japan run the United States but the people who live in the United States are seeing newsreels of our actual history correct so what the fuck why does that matter so who gives a shit because they believe it's a way of defeating uh, Germany and Japan and getting out of the United States so what's happening is they're seeing these like alternate universe and they're like, wait, wait, wait. Are they aware that there is an alternate universe? No, they're not. They're just seeing these things come by, but yet they're like, they look so authentic. They're not forgeries, and they're like, this looks too real. Like, what are these? Like, how, like, why is Hiroshima, like, in ruins right now? Like, what is, what am I seeing here? You know? And so that's basically season one is basically, you know, setting up the, the characters, if you will, the players of the game. And uh, establishing that these newsreels are going from point A to point B, and Hitler's still around, though he's sick because he has that little whatever disease that he had. Yeah, he, he was peed on too much, so now he has like whatever disease you get from being peed <laughs> on too much. <laughs> Pretty much. And so yeah. it was. Just, it was. Just, I don't know. It's just very don't, interesting. Don't cause... drink the bathwater, Hitler. <laughs> or piss, or neither, hey. for that matter. Bear Grylls drinks Bear piss. Grylls. <laughs> Bear Grylls is urine. Hey. You are what hey. you drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, recently, there was a game that came out, and... <sighs> I didn't pay much attention to it because I'm about as fucking stoked for another MOBA as every other person that's in the gaming world right now. Like, We have enough, I feel. <laughs> yeah. But but as soon as I saw the PC Gamer, PC Gamer put a tweet out saying that the whoever is in charge of high res, or it was uh, their, who the fuck was it? Uh, it was their COO came out and was like he he claimed that overwatch was not a basis for paladins like they didn't pull any of their ideas from overwatch so i was like well it's free let's go find out how fucking full of shit this guy is so i downloaded paladins and i can understand why he was quoted saying that (laughs) and i can understand why no one fucking believed him because that game, that game is a cut and paste of Overwatch. Well, it's not a cut and paste because the graphics are diggity diggity dog shit. It's a free game. It is a free game. It is a free game. That is certainly true. 
But these, I mean, high res, high res isn't much of a slouch. Like Tribes was a lot of fun. That was a good game. It was enjoyable. What else did they make? They did um, fucking. Why did I close that? <laughs> high res studios. They did... But high res wasn't the original makers of Tribes. They did Tribes Ascent, which I was kind of like, eh, mm-hmm. when that came out. Because I think uh, uh, Sierra made the original Tribes, if I remember correctly. They published it, did they? Uh, maybe that's it. But that, Fuck, dude, I wasted so many hours with Tribes and Tribes 2. Those... Tribes 2 was a lot of fun. Yeah. I had a lot of fun with that stuff. Even the mods Maybe are pretty that, good. That's what I'm thinking is fucking Tribes 2. Tribes 2 was a good game. Yeah, Tribes Ascend is pretty much a, you know, a spitting image. Or not spitting image, but it's uh, not It's not the same. Though it has the same lore and classes and whatnot. Uh, it was more, it's more, I think Tribes Ascend is more like Tribes meets Quake. Oh, okay. Like a faster pace. Yeah. Like smaller, smaller arena, or was it still? I can't remember. I think it's roughly on the par with standard tribes man, uh, maps, but it's just I don't know. Like you know, you can definitely ski. You know, they because skiing used to be just a kind of a bug, not really a bug, but was a. It's the funnest fucking part of those right. games, in my opinion. Uh, but they actually incorporated it as a game mechanic within Ascend, uh, and it just I just remember it being a lot more fast paced and not as tactical as uh, the original tribes and tribes two were. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. But I could be co- totally wrong. I haven't played the game in probably a decade, so it tells you that. Yeah, I, I can't even remember when I played Ascend. But, um, so... So I played Paladins, and I played I played a couple different characters, and one of the ones that I played was... A f- it's... Each character is a weird mix between two of Overwatches. So I played the I played the tank class which is Reinhardt certainly and like May, the little ice chick. Oh god. And it's it's fucking yeah, it's crazy how similar it is. Um really wish you had played it. Uh they have fucking mounts and faster respawn times. And then the weird thing for me was, like, it's set up with in-game shopping, similar to, like, League of Legends or Dota. But the in-game shopping isn't, uh, like, reversible. So whenever you buy an item, that's just with you permanently. Like, you just just upgrade. Hi, Kim. Just upgrade, like, a skill. I'm going to take a brief break here. (laughs) We can proceed. (laughs) She was asking if we were done. Cool. Um, I appreciate your input on that. Uh, we'll move on to the next thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I, I I think my train of thought has stopped. So, were you asking a question, or I mean, because I, I, I no. So, so okay, that's why we're talking about the shops. We we're talking about the shops, and we were talking about uh, persistence. And I think that was a pretty cool concept. Uh, somebody was telling me about that at work. I think it was Anthony was telling me about that work because he tried it out, or at least he was looking into it because because purely it was free. Um, into paladins. Yeah, into paladins. That's it. I mean, that I guess that that's the big argument right now is that it's free, but it's it's a, it's not a good game. That's that's the reality of it, in my opinion. Was having having played that, there's a reason why you're paying for a Blizzard game. There's a reason why you're paying for Overwatch because Overwatch is dramatically fucking better, and it comes from a better pedigree than Paladins, and unfortunately, Blizzard just kind of, you know, makes better fucking games than a lot of people do. Right. Well, I, I, I've i always kind of hesitant with, you know, permanent purchases in-game, especially if that's, you know, a free-to-play game because then you run a high risk of pay-to-win or at least maybe unbalanced or, I don't know, it just seems like, at least with, at least with Overwatch, like every game starts where everyone's on the same level. Like, it, yeah. it, you're not you know, more advanced starting off. And then, you know, it's just some people. And I mean, in, in Paladin's defense, uh, all of those games, the first thing that, that any of us would look for is that if it is pay to win, because if it's pay to win, then there's no fucking point in playing the game whatsoever. Right. I mean, for me, because I have no interest. I have no interest in spending 
$300 on some stupid fucking Clash of Clan game so I can just have a taller knight than the other guy and crystal walls. Like, it's... it's Paying for it makes no sense. But Paladins... I mean, it all looked um, just for aesthetics, like skins and stuff like that. It wasn't okay. like pay money and get... Because I guess you also level up your skills or you have to level up and then you get more of your skills or something like that. Is that accurate? I think... <laughs> I think it operates similar to like if you remember League of Legends like rune page setup yeah. where the the runes unlock like as as you level up your account and then once you hit level cap then all of your runes are available and you can use the highest level runes. I I haven't played that in for fucking ever so I'm not real sure but like similar to that idea and like leveling up I think you can level up characters I don't know. Well, it's a, I don't know. Is it worth downloading and checking it out? In my opinion, <laughs> is, is that if a you no? Don't have Overwatch? Sure. Oh, okay. Go check it out. <laughs> but if you have over, if you have, yeah, if you have Overwatch, don't even fucking bother. What about uh, was it Paradigm or uh? Oh, Paragon. Paragon. That's it. Yeah, I played it like when it first came out for about like ten minutes. Um. And then I haven't gone back to it. I played I played that one at I played that one at PAX and I hate you so much for that, by the way. I'm so pissed. I, I have some good information about that. Good news. <laughs> It'll be back next year. As yeah. It turns out. Yeah, you know how hard it is to get tickets? Yeah. Do you? Obviously not, because you're bringing that up as a conversation piece. Tickets for packs are fucking easy to get, as it turns out. How? You just walk up to the front door, and one of the 97 scalpers that are standing out there selling tickets for 50 fucking bucks will just sell you a fucking ticket for 50 fucking dollars. Oh. Yep. Yeah. All right. That place is... It, I would imagine that it probably sells... Probably 10% of their tickets go to scalpers. So, there's never... There were there were more tickets outside than I could have even fucking imagined. Like when it, I assume that it sold out, sold out. But right, it, right. Is it is it worth going to? Yeah, it's totally fun to check out. It'd be yeah, it'd be a lot of fun to go with. To go with a group. For all of the days, right. So that way, like everybody can split up and then report back at the end of every day. Like check check this shit out. So that way, like, everybody gets to check out everything and not just, like, blindly go into something stupid like standing in line to play. I forget the name of the game, but Melissa and I played it and it was just kind of a shit sandwich. It's like, well, there goes there goes a fucking hour. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's on my bucket list. So that's I'll, either this year or next year. But anyways, what were you saying prior to yeah, me interrupting uh, you? Um, yeah, uh, Par- Paragon. Par- Paragon? Yeah, Paragon had a booth set up there, so I played that for a little bit, and I liked it enough to go home and play it because it's free to download. Right. And uh, I, it's, dude, it's just another fucking MOBA. Yep. And I mean, MOBAs were a lot of fun for a little while, but I think MOBAs were ironed out when League of Legends came out. Like, I think that that was, like, that was the proof of a MOBA. Mm. And then Dota, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's people that love those games that if they listen to this, they'll freak the fuck out because I'm saying that they're the same game, but they're the same game. Yeah. I mean, at, at least with Blizzard, they tried to change it with Hero. I just sound like a fucking Blizzard fanboy at this point, but... <laughs> At least with Heroes of the Storm, it was a little bit different with map mechanics and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. But Paragon is... is It's just a third-person version of League of Legends or Dota. Like, the character ideas are the same. The character looks are the same. The character mechanics are the same. The fucking... There, There is, like, one map mechanic for, like, Harvesters or something like that, and I don't even know what fucking purpose they serve. But you just kill towers and you kill minions until somebody kills more towers than the other person. Right. Well, I think the biggest issue with MOBAs is just the the, uh, the 
decline of the gaming community because of it. Like, I think MOBAs are was cool initially because it kind of brought... Uh, basically, it kind of did what Counter-Strike did with first-person shooters in the sense that it kind of brought it to the mainstream where, you know, you can jump in and do it. You don't have to be anything special. You just go and kill people. And then here comes MOBAs, which kind of did the same thing, but with real-time strategy in a sense because originally... Back in the Dota days, I mean, that was top down. It was a freaking mod for uh, Warcraft. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's gotten too competitive. And so the community has gotten complete. Toxic as fuck. Very toxic. Very toxic. And so, like, the whole competitive scene is just. Uh, it, just I've, uh, it just destroys a lot of these games because. The- I, I think the issue with toxicity comes in at... I can understand why competitive level gaming is competitive. Like, I can understand why that's toxic. NFL players say terrible shit to each other all the fucking time. The problem, I think, is that when when that toxicity spills over into quick play, that's a fucking issue. When you have somebody on your team in quick play that's telling you what you're fucking up on, within reason, that's fine. But as soon as they're telling you all the terrible shit that they did to your mom last night, it's like, (laughs) this is just for fun. Like, if you want to go play competitive, go play competitive. Go be a cunt somewhere else. Right. Let us us lowly folk just play down here where games are still actually fun. Right, right. Yeah. No, I I, I, I agree with you on that one. And you're, you're totally right about Dota. Like, I remember playing it back when it was that Warcraft 3 map. And that fucker was dense, dude. And I had no interest in getting into it. I played it a couple times because the people at Gamer were like, dude, this is this is super rad. And it's like, why? Right. At that time, it was just completely, completely lost to me. Well, I just, but... I just remember the, cra- the shopping in that game. Like, there was no known progression to it. Like, you had to either experiment or research it on what items go together. Like, the UI just did not facilitate crafting. And so these people had these awesome weapons because they knew the combination of the weapons. And so that was almost, like, in its own right, a... A fucking cheat code. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, check out my flaming sword of destiny. (laughs) Shove it up your ass. (laughs) So, yeah. I don't know. It's just just depressing. And I, I always talk about this with other people, about the toxicity of the 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 comp- competitive stuff because even like if you even look at the people who are competitive I when you look at their face they do not look like they're having fun they look like they're at a job doing work because they get paid for it but I can't imagine them like if you're playing Counter Strike eight ten hours a day you know x amount of days a week I'm sorry but Counter Strike can only be so fun for so long like it, dude totally <laughs> like I just can't imagine them going Hey, look, it's Dust 2 again. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, woo. Hey, yeah. hey guess what? <laughs> Dust 2 again. Woo, yeah. <laughs> it just, I, don't, I just can't. Man, freaking, I'm a gaming whore. I can play games for about a week straight, and I get bored of it. Move on to something else. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would never put myself into into the idea of playing one game professionally I, I, is fucking crazy cuz uh, to be quite honest i haven't found a game that i like that much that i would even want to consider playing that much get burnt out super quick i mean i i that's super rad that people like something that much but i that's certainly not i'd rather play like mini instead of be super good right I mean, yeah, they get they get paid good money though. I mean, it's it's such a small group that you know to be a competitive player and get paid for it. I mean, that in itself is a bragging right, in which I can bow down to. But I don't know. Like, I agree. It's, I, there's no thing out there that is so good that I can't stop playing it. I mean, if that's the case, yeah. then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. I'd be playing that game right now. What? Well, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> The, the, I think it was that the Seventy Sixers just bought, like the Philadelphia Seventy Sixers, the basketball team. You with me? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the punchline. movement. Yeah, no, I, I'm just waiting for the punchline. So I'm preparing myself, waiting for the punchline. They bought, 
one for sure, maybe two professional gaming teams. <laughs> And I think God, there's been a there's been a few a few purchases as of late that are like big name people buying professional gaming teams, and then you have excuse me schools down in Los Angeles that are giving. I oh boy, just lost my train of thought. Um, scholarships for like League of Legends or Dota, shit like that. That's stupid. It's a new. I do you think it is? I I do. It's because why you're for scholarships. I mean, explain to me this. Explain to me why someone getting a scholarship for football is any different than someone. Oh, getting I think a that's stupid too. For League of Legends, I think it's. I think I think scholarships for playing football is, is idiotic. The only difference is, is that I mean, it's a money generator for the schools. That's that's the only that's, thing. That's why they have scholarships because, well, they make money off it. So fair enough. I can see the business decision behind it. I think it's moronic. And, and stupid because it's I we're putting value in things that shouldn't need that type of value for well obviously. I mean I mean look, look what's happening to football players it's, it, they get banged up me. have head damage and whatever oh okay <laughs> that's a conversation that I'll have <laughs> but sure. but yeah, at the yeah. same time like gaming you, you start putting such a value into esports of you are better than everybody else man you're gonna have some fucked up kids just like you're on some fuck yeah fucked up football players so what i'm saying is that so, <laughs> we're, we're putting value it, it's a bad move because you're, you're basically saying because you can literally sit on your ass and hit keys so fast in such in a sequence that you are just better than everybody else you get special treatment whereas other people that I don't know that do good work for humanity, that you know are artistic. I mean, even you should get a a scholarship for being a complete pain in the asshole. Sometimes I mean, you just you have that specific. You're better than everybody else. Good at it. Yeah, you're great. <laughs> <laughs> and so you deserve a scholarship. I don't know. It's just, I, it's not some existential shit, Mike. I don't know. The scholarship should definitely be for people who are trying to improve humanity. You know doctors scientists or kids that want to that are inventing cool ass shit like the oh god i don't even know i mean the whole anti-raping movement <laughs> not really a movement but like the wave of technology to movement. help prevent that <laughs> that sounds really horrible yeah, yeah. <laughs> but people are uniting against rape yeah alas I, I i can get on board with that but uh and all it's like like the nail polish and stuff like that like that's what we need to, you know, technology like that, those people, the people that are coming up with new technologies and new ways of doing things, those need scholarships, which they do, but it's just not enough. Like, I'm tired of hearing about the freaking Kardashians. I'm tired of hearing about football players. Or so- you will never not hear about them. And, you know, it's just, it, it's depressing. It is depressing. Like, I know that's society, and it's because we sit there and we live vicariously through our, our celebrities. I just recording a podcast, decided to pull the wrapper off my fucking bottle. <laughs> Anyways, go on, please. You were talking? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, I fidget. So, yes, scholarships. And. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and we're back! <laughs> Why are you making fun of my pulling off rappers? It's loud. Is it? It's fucking loud. Yeah. <laughs> Look at your audacity bars. Your audacity bars are just spiking to the ceiling. Sorry, everybody. Every crunch. <laughs> so, speaking of, I guess, competitive gaming, online gaming, Twitch has brought in a whole nother, a whole nother realm of gamers who are getting paid and that's like personality. So this is a whole nother level that football doesn't have. Football doesn't have people who are fun to watch play football. Does that make sense? There are a few. Tim Tebow was fun to watch because he did the whole Tim uh, Tebowing, you know, he did the whole kneeling. So people got behind that because he was an interesting character. Uh, Freaking uh, Peyton Manning. He was a fun person to watch because when he was old... Peyton Manning was good at the sport. Oh, yeah, I agree. But Tim Tebow was a top-round draft pick for being good at the sport. 
These are not comparable. <laughs> so are you saying that people who play games well are not entertaining to watch? I'm saying that um, there are the people who get paid to play professional football that play professional football on a professional level. It doesn't matter how good they are. They could sit on the bench. They're still playing football at a professional level. Level. Okay. There's no one playing. So, okay. So there, there are people on Twitch who are getting paid. Like Lyric. Lyric, for instance. Not a professional gamer. Gets paid to play video games. Does that make sense? Right. Lyric isn't a professional competitive Counter-Strike player. Or a professional competitive league. Or Dota. Or anything. He's not a professional gamer. He is a personality who gets paid a fuck ton of money to play video games in front of a large group of people. Do you under I, I, like it, yeah. am I making the comparison clear? And like I'm just trying to make my thoughts come together. I uh, I don't know. I, I guess I, I I'm missing the point of what you're okay. trying to get across. Like are are you saying that what are, what are you trying to say? Like are you saying that yeah, I don't understand what you're trying to say. I, Everyone that's playing professional football is a professional football player. Right. Like, they get paid to perform on the football team. Okay. There isn't anyone in sports who gets paid to just play the game. But what's the, so what's the definition? Just, well, what's the definition of professional? Of, well, guess, by professional gamer, I mean they are going to competitions for their particular game, and they're winning, and their 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 income is coming from competing professionally. I'm talking about professional gamers versus gaming personalities. Well, but the definition of professional. Is, okay, let, we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna go full on semantics with this shit. You know exactly what I'm saying, well, I, right? Yeah, but I'm arguing with you because I there's no argument that that needs to be had. Well, why not? You understand what I'm saying, correct? I, because there there are a fucking this is just fact. There is no <laughs> argument to have, Mike. Your devil's advocate bullshit has a place, and it's not fucking here. Whatever. <laughs> what the fuck ever. Well, <laughs> Not a constructive conversation. I, I disagree. So, with Amazon's movement on purchasing Twitch two years ago, and they just announced three new games at TwitchCon last weekend, and you and I were checking them out before, before this started, and the one that stood out the one that looked real fucking stupid to me, the one that looked like dog shit to me was Breakaway. Because that looks like, it. it's that 4v4 brawler that there's a ball in the middle and you need to get it into a goal on either side. You can score points by either putting the ball in the hoop or by eliminating the entire enemy team before anybody responds. And it just looks like it looks like a cash grab on a level of, like, Rocket League. That's what I was saying. It like, sounds like a Rocket uh, League. They're, yeah, they're doing it, so we need to fucking do that. But, I mean, they added in the MOBA elements of classes and skills. But it... I don't know. There was one... There was one video on YouTube that you could watch gameplay of that they did at TwitchCon and it I don't know it looks like it may be fun but it like I said it just looks like a fucking they're trying to make a game that would be good on Twitch that's well, what that's they're trying to do exactly. they're trying to make an esport like intentional no I don't think they're trying to make an esport per se but it trying to make something that is uh, short term to watch but is actiony enough to be entertaining because they make money off the advertisements, they make money in all these other places. That if they and then I had to be competitive enough to obviously get people to play it. 
but it, it, it makes it, it doesn't have to be that you know it doesn't have to be that cr- I mean look at freaking Rocket League yeah dude have you been in Rocket League in a while I haven't the boards around that game has fucking exploded dude the boards that are that used to have like all the it would be an excellent place for sponsorships or ads weird Instead of it just saying Rocket League now, it's got all sorts of... Like, there's Twitch posters up and a bunch of other gaming-related companies that are putting their advertisements into Rocket League now, which is cool. I mean, it was going to come eventually, right? Uh, And I mean... Go ahead. As long as it's not intrusive, I would say go for it. Yeah, no, it's not like... It's not like you can contribute $5 and get the Twitch car that just shoots balls into the goal. Like it's nothing. Right. It's just some side sideboard thing. But. Oh man. Fuck. Lost it. But yeah. Breakaway looks. Meh. <laughs> the other one was new world. And. That one was super vague. Did you find any more information on that? Just... <laughs> I have not. E- even uh, the sites I'm having are like, yeah, it could be this, could be that. For, it's an open sandbox game, so that can be just like, you know, Rust. It could be like Ark. It could be God. I mean, they, nobody knows, as at least from what I can tell as of right now. That, uh, what was it called? Like the Amazon unboxing video that you can find on YouTube. That one, like, their their description were like, you want to be a farmer? You can do that. Or you can be a soldier if you want. And, like, they never really hit on anything. They're like, here's what a fireplace looks like in this game. Right. Well, that brings up something when I saw this originally. Uh, basically, it's the next stage of gaming. And if you look, if, if, well, okay. if you look at what's happening, right? There's a lot of there's YouTubers, there's Twitchers, there's other streamers with other agencies, right? So it's basically there's a lot of money, there's a lot of eyes on entertainment, right? Uh, people playing. The next step, which has always been this way, like it, even a lot of games that were able to do this very well were very successful, and that's player-made content. So basically... Sandbox games is the next logical step in a sense where it's the players that create the environment. Lineage 2, for example. Though not really a sandbox game, but it was... It, the the concept of, you know, player-made politics made that game a lot of fun. Star, yeah. uh, Star Wars Galaxies, sandbox. People make... they It was very successful until they broke it. Um, and that's player-made co- you know, content, you know, gears, what, what, have, what have you. Um... Uh, what else is out there? I mean, so when you say player made content, are you are you talking about content that players make, or are you talking about like in game trade skills? I'm talking about players are part of the content. Okay, so any it, either of those, right? So like, yeah. Okay. So basically, like you you are affecting my gameplay. So that basically, when I play it and you're in there somehow, either you're my adversary or you're my ally, whatever, if you're able to affect my world, my game, in a positive or negative manner, that game, it, that, that's the next step. And so that's why Sandbox has always been on the cusp of success because the the fantasy of me being able to affect you, being able to f- affect the world, me to be able to create the obstacles. Like, if I want to create a castle and have me and my buddies defend this castle, but in this castle has a very rare orb that I found, whatever, that people want to. So my castle gets sieged because they mm-hmm. want that orb. That's amazing because it's not, you know it's not scripted. It's it's a it's a sure. game mechanic that it, it it's basically you're playing on the human drive for exploration for the next piece for the unknown and so if you have a game that has the unknown you're going to be successful and so what they were talking about the biggest thing that stood out when I was watching the YouTube video about New World was if you want to go explore go explore go explore the world I'm like that's really cool same thing with Mm -hmm. a lot of other games I'm going to say it but I don't want to talk about it but uh, Star Citizen the whole idea of exploring the space that Mm -hmm. that is fascinating to me. I want to go to a place that nobody else has gone before and see it first. 
and kind of plot it out, explore it, whatever. And so that is a game mechanic that's always appealed to me, and I think it appeals to a lot of people. And so if you can get a game out there, which New World, obviously we have no idea what it is, but it sounds like that's kind of the same concept where it's the realism world, the you know, affecting it and affecting other people. And so that's kind of a tangent, but that's what I think. I think I, think I would... I would argue that players affecting each other in video games is what MMOs lost when MMOs went from a ton of fun to play to uh, World of Warcraft. Like that, there was there was a separation right there because you couldn't fucking survive if you tried to go just grind out all your levels by yourself in MMOs before, before I'm sure there were a few, right. but before WoW came along and just made it, you, I, I was beside myself when I, when I learned that you could solo all the way to level cap in World of Warcraft, it blew my fucking mind. Like it, it was possible in EverQuest if you played a certain class, but the amount of hours and time that would go into it were insane. And if you fucked up, you're getting murdered, and then you're losing you're losing your body, you're losing experience, which you're losing time that you put into it. Like it, this is all serious shit that just isn't affected anymore. Right. There's no death penalties. It seems like every time you and I discuss video games, it devolves into the same MMOs aren't the same as they used to be conversation. But like in EverQuest. If or lineage, like if you were out grinding somewhere and somebody just showed up and just started smacking the shit out of you, or waited until you were low on health and then just ran up and ganked you real quick, or healed mobs, like there's it's that was that's what was fun. That's why you needed a group of six to even leave yeah. town and lineage because you don't know who's just over that hilltop waiting to start murdering motherfuckers. Yeah. Nah. So I mean, yeah. Go no, ahead. No, go ahead. I think, um, uh, it's, uh, what was the fuck was it called? The Old Republic is putting an MMO tag on that is absurd. That is not that is not an MMO game. Like that game is, it's. That game is a Bioware game attached to a chat room, and it's not <laughs> a fucking MMO. Right? Yeah, I had to. I I really enjoyed that game's early levels. I thought, but again, it was single player. But I thought it was pretty good. I think it was like first like ten or twelve, fifteen levels or something like that. It was pretty good. But again, it was like single player, like you said. Mm-hmm. I just selected whichever option would lead me to shoot them in the face with my bounty hunter character. That. <laughs> Pick that one. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hopefully, they did a lot of talking about Lumberyard, too, during all of this. So I wonder if... I mean, th- they're not going to have player-made content, I don't think. I think the landmark idea with EverQuest Next was insane. Because, like, the amount of... The amount... Imagine imagine a game that had as many players at say half as many players at WoW as WoW at its peak. So it had seven million players. And say ten percent of those people are in Lumberyard making buildings or environments and then submitting them to and then say five percent of those people are actually submitting them to Amazon to get them put in. The amount of assets that would be coming into Amazon would be fucking insane. Like it, there would be a cloud. We'd have to build servers on Mars just to house all the garbage that people had made in Lumberyard. So I I don't understand why they mentioned Lumberyard so much. Oh, I mean, well, sir. And I, I mean, there's only a finite number of dick-shaped buildings that you can fit into one video game too. Yeah, but you put. So, two dicks together you get yourself a cross there's only so many dicks <laughs> that you can put in a video game before you just run out of options I don't know I remember looking into Lumberyard 
uh, a handful of months ago, but it didn't take. I just couldn't. It was. To it anyway. was fun that. I liked I liked that you could just make something and then just hit the button to go into first person mode and then suddenly you're this dumb little robot that you can just run around and check out the shit that you just made. That's that's super you make a bunch of little hills and then you just go jump over all the hills and then you close the umber, lumber yard and you never fucking touch <laughs> it again. It's a ton of fun. But the crucible or crucible, I guess it's just called crucible. That one stood out the most to me out of the three that were announced and that one was described as a third person shooter and there's 12 people but no one's on a team it's that sounds fucking super interesting that you can like you can work together or betray each other and it the only person that wins is the last person standing right no, it definitely sounds uh, a lot like um, Hunger Games. Yeah. Because well, it, what I found was cool, though, was you had the Game Master. So you had a 13th yeah. player. And then you also theoretically had Twitch influencing somehow. And now I'm like, okay. At that point, now you're really adding a dynamic into the game where it's, it's voyeurism is what it really is. Because then you feel like someone's watching you play and you get off on it is what ends up happening. And then they just oh is that is that what happens? But you just end up getting off on yeah. it. Yeah, or just like just like the other that uh, game that came out with uh, it was a DM guide or not DM guide. I'm sorry, it was a DM, it was a dungeon crawler game where people can come in and screw with you. Oh, okay. And that was it. So like basically, it was a Twitch type perfect game. It's because there people watch you play Twitch, and then people would jump in and like you know they would have to be a subscriber of the Twitch channel, of course. And they can sit there and put monsters in front of you or put traps and all that stuff. So do they sell, like, 12 copies of that to the 12 people that have enough of a fan base to... I don't remember the name of it. So, possibly. Yep. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) But I thought that was... Yeah, that sounds fucking cool. The, the The 13th player. I wonder if it's... Because they kind of mention both side by side, but they don't. They don't say that. I wonder if you could get thirteen of your best friends together and play a game of this, or if the thirteenth player revolves around a Twitch channel. Does that make sense? It didn't sound like it was a requirement. When when I watched the YouTube video, it found like yeah. if you had a Twitch channel, blah blah blah, they can participate as well. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be even some... I'm sure there's going to be mechanics only for Twitch people to use. Probably. That because makes that's going to entice people to be on Twitch. Like, basically what's going to end up happening is that me and you will be on Twitch streaming and waiting for people to screw with us. Just because we're hoping. We're hoping that we'll be blessed by some stranger to go, I will participate in your life. And I will... We're just... Yeah. Standing around talking, just like, so, man, what are you up to? Oh, you know, just, you know, polishing my blades. And then a meteor will fucking smack the other person, and one person will just get the victory. It's like, oh, cool. What a fun fucking game this is. I hope they make a second. Let's do that again. Yeah. Boy, oh, boy, I hope I get hit by the meteor this time. <laughs> I think Amazon's for sure you I mean they they spent a they spent a billion dollars on Twitch and they're definitely going to use it as a platform for their for their products but it Breakaway did not look impressive. Breakaway looked like another fucking like another way for them to like sneakily sell people who don't like sports a sports game. Like look, look! This one, th- this is a, this is a guy with a big hammer. He's a Viking. It's he's not, he, uh, he uh, he's not trying to get that ball into that goal. But well, that ball's a a rune, and the gate is a magical force field. So it's soccer. Well, this guy has a gun. I I don't I don't fucking get it rocket league killed it because it's just like 
car car soccer. That's cool. right. Makes me want to play Rocket League. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to go back and play. I always sucked at I don't it. Scream as much as I used. To. Oh yeah, you did. You, you, you always made me feel horrible about playing it. Hey Mike, you know yeah, what? Just go stand in the back, and we'll take care of it. Okay. And then I still fuck it up. I don't feel bad because you just started that conversation saying I was never good at that game. And then you're like, you made me feel bad for being bad. Oh, speaking so. of racing games, or not racing games, but uh, Forza. Four or whatever. Three. Three is it three? It's on PC. Forza Horizon Three. Yeah. And uh, Anthony says it's really good. He had all. I've heard that it's really good too. So I think, and since you left me your, you were gracious enough to leave me your controller, I may actually go and get it on the PC. Nice. I did leave a controller with. Yeah. I did. Yeah, because I sucked oh, at man. I sucked at uh, at at Rocket, Rocket League. League so bad. Like, he's like, <laughs> "Hey, Mike, I will get you a controller." Oh, thank you, thank you, Tyler. <laughs> oh, that's right, <laughs> that's right. So at the same time that we got our 3ds's. Yes, I still play that from time to time. It goes with me. Do you? Yeah. I just don't play it online. I I took. Um, go no, ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. Um, I took it to school with me a couple times just to see, like, the... These are all the people around you. <laughs> and that was fun, like, twice. And I just stopped. Pokemon comes out in November, though, so... Maybe that'll be decent. Oh, I, I got into my Pokemon game, and I got to a point where I literally had my... <laughs> my Pokemon dressing up in, a, like, a beauty contest or whatever pageant. And I spent hours hours trying to make like my Pikachu look fabulous. It, Perfect. It, it was it was horrible. Horrible. And I'm like, I'm done. And I haven't gone back to it because I'm like, now what do I do with my life? Like my, my Pokemon like made it. <laughs> That's it. But I, I I couldn't figure out what else I wanted to do with my life. And so I haven't gone you back. You won. You won Pokemon. <laughs> Well, um, that that does it for what I have written down for this clumsy, at best, podcast recording. Like, do you have anything that you uh, just just have a burning desire to mention? Alrighty. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was trying to I was trying to come up with something funny and. Like it just could not. Mm -hmm. I I just yeah no I'm sorry like deep uh, inhale was it? <laughs> oh man, but I miss the old days. But anyways, there that that, that was my we all do contribution to to what I wanted to get out there is that I miss the old days. I think it'll come back around. I think um. I think microtransactions have successfully ruined video games, but I think people are starting to realize the issue in that, and it's going to start coming back around. I think people... I think... Developers had too much control with microtransactions and just made microtransactions a fucking thing instead of making a decent game. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that one. And then that and DLCs. What was it? Oh, Ark. Ark got totally lit up because they dropped a DLC and they are still even in alpha. Yeah. Uh, and that that DLC was the top selling fucking item on Steam for that week too. So all those people bitched and what happened? Yeah. Sold a fucking ton of them. Well, I guess PlayStation, they kicked them out. Uh, I think the PSN network, like you can't get it anymore. Let's, let's be real. What is beta? What is well, in this day and age? What's pre-release now? Yeah. yeah, no, that's pretty much once you hit alpha, it's released. It just yeah. they get they have a an argument saying all oh, the game's not done yet. Okay, but like how many games actually come out of alpha? Like seven days to die. Like that game's been in development for freaking error. Great game, but. They at least are adding content, but I mean that's one of the things where these games just they get stuck in alpha and they never get out. 
I don't understand it. I don't. I don't understand just putting a name on something and being like, "Well, I mean, it's it's just it's pre-release." But Ark has been out for how long? Oh. I mean, I haven't. We've been playing it for like two years. Off and on for a while. Yeah, I want to say about two years. I mean, we, we do have computers in front of us. Um, I I have one of those too. That's weird. Uh, I guess it's scheduled to be released December of this year. Oh, cool. Right on. <laughs> Whatever that entails. <laughs> Which is basically changing name from alpha to release version, whatever. They'll change the subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> but I always did like Ark, but I don't know. I had fun too. Um, I think the most fun was had when it was it was fun on our own server but it was a lot of fun on other people's servers where shit was sped up so you could like instead of committing and in like what like a month's worth of work into a character yeah you could like get through it quickly i i got so fed up i wanted a dire wolf so bad that i uprooted my entire base built a ship out of a raft and three times I was trying to get no sorry a mammoth I was trying to get a mammoth so hard and I get very close and out of nowhere a pack of dire wolves would show up and destroy me and it happened like three times I get very close to finishing it and of course it takes hours to like actually tame a mammoth and sure they just does. come out and kill me I'm like Ugh. and so I was like alright and then I haven't gotten back since so I was, I was very. You gotta go. You gotta go through the whole thing of like. You have to build your base, like your forward operating base, and then you have to fill a bunch of treasure chests with a fuck ton of walls, and then you. Somehow get a mammoth lured back to your forward operating base, get it knocked unconscious, and then build a fucking wall around it as quickly as you can. And then just start feeding it berries. I. For hours I, upon hours. I, my ship, my raft was so big, it actually had its own pen built on it. So basically, I go up onto the beach, open up the massive gates, go, I go, hi, whack, 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 and then run, chase it, or it chases me back onto the boat, and then I would slip through a hatch and shut the door and then float off into a distance. So you never got a fucking mammoth that way? Did it they, never worked. Did the wolves throw on... It, it, like, uh, it never worked. They swim after you? No, like it, they just either wouldn't go through the door, or and so I couldn't get it, or they fall off the boat, like because... So poor craftsman... Oh, because of Alpha, right? Uh, the, yeah, the net code. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adam always hates me when I say that coach. Trigger words. Yeah, that was your motherfucking thing there for a little while. Yeah, it's, it's a problem with the net code. That's a problem with the net code. <laughs> oh, man. Ordered pizza two hours ago and it never showed up. Uh, probably fucking update their net code. <laughs> uh, you have to have good net code, dude. Net code's key. Evidently. Yeah. yeah. In the world of Mike, net code is key. Well, all right, man. All right. I appreciate you helping me with this. No problem. Um, hopefully I can edit it into something that's, I don't know. Hopefully I can kind of disguise it to make it sound like a, a good podcast. But we'll see. We'll see. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. We'll see. <laughs> really appreciate the, uh, uh, the, the, the praise I, I receive and for taking a couple hours of my evening to assist you with your podcast. I've had a blast. It was amazing. It was great. Thank you. I, I I appreciate all that you've done and the community work that you do on behalf of the podcast. Um, you know, you really go above and beyond. Uh, it's it's great. Good job. You know, God bless. All right. Glad you saved up all your fucking words for that moment. Good deal. Wait, are you saying that I don't talk? Are you telling me I don't? Okay. No, 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 no. We're stopping this. <laughs> All right, um, stop recording.